about winning clients using proposals. And this is something that you might not know anything about, but if you have a great proposal, it is a phenomenal way to win clients. And I got to tell you this, we've never discussed this before, and I'm all about anything that's a highly effective methodology to be able to help you get more customers, especially now with the economy changing and so many uncertainties. So with us today to have this discussion is Joe Ardeser. Now, he's actually a former digital agency owner of 12 years. He's worked with notable brands such as Bluetooth, T-Mobile, Scantron, and built his agency from just himself to a team of 12 people. Now, after selling his agency, Joe decided to take his passion for sales and proposal writing and create Smart Pricing Table interactive proposal software that cuts down on back and forth, incorporates upsells, and helps generate proposals at lightning speed. Now, as a small business owner, Joe learned that so much of being successful comes down to closing quality clients quickly. And he loves talking about all the things business-related, but in particular, really loves talking about discussing proposals, systems, and operations. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here, Ty. Thanks for that intro. Yeah, man, this is like a huge jump. Like, help me understand, because an agency that does all kinds of marketing, um, right. what made you grab and hold on to proposals and go down the proposal route? I think it's such an interesting transition from digital agency to being able to do what you do with proposals. Yeah, well, you know, it's really interesting. I, I think one of the things that you learn when you start your own business is you have to kind of detach from your trade and really love business and business systems. And the reality, it, what I discovered is our our uh, our agency was going to either succeed or fail based on the quality of our proposals. Um, I, I saw that you know when we when we got something wrong in a proposal, it would often manifest itself you know six months down the road, uh, client, uh, misunderstandings, expectation issues. Um, and so we just kind of focused on it like crazy. Uh, we actually ended up creating our own in-house uh, uh, proposal writing software, and I fell in love. It's been a great journey. <laughs> That's awesome. What what um, what did you find along the way with business proposals? Like, wh- why do you think they're so valuable? Like, what were you guys doing where you really got the value of proposals? And because I, I gotta be honest with you, Joe, I don't know if anybody else that does what you do. I don't know if software. I don't know if people that do it. I don't know if companies that do it. So what made you realize that proposals were such an effective way to be able to get clients? Yeah, well, you know, part, part of this is, you know, the, it, in, in, the, in the kind of, if you really distill it down, what is a proposal? A proposal is, here's what I'm offering, here are the details, and here are the prices. Um, Ty, if I, if I was going to build you a pool or something like that, and I just said, hey, Ty, it's $10,000 and I'm going to, you know, it, I'm going to fill it with water <laughs> when I'm done, right? Um, I have created so much room for one of the worst relationships I will ever have with a customer if that's the kind of stuff I do. So proposal, good proposal writing is thinking through what is my offering? What are the details? Um, what does it cost? What can my customer expect? And putting that into a nice a nice document. If you don't do that, um, you can create all sorts of pain. Um, <clears throat> I, I remember one of one of my favorite um, uh, favorite kind of uh, leading indicators with my agency is just our number of uh, our amount of non payment. Um, in twelve years, I had thirty five hundred dollars of non payment, um, which is minuscule compared to you know what we what we brought in. But so much of it was you know say what you're going to do. Uh, be clear and then deliver. And I think that all comes from the proposal process. Do you see proposals work in most industries? Some industries, can you stand out if you're in an industry that's not normal to get proposals? Like what's your thought on that? Yeah, every industry is definitely different. And I would say proposal software may work for one industry where it doesn't work for another. Um, I think uh, companies that I, I think you know, proposal writing is really important. I would say service-based companies. Um, I, I'm in the, I was in the agency world, uh, marketing services, advertising services. Um, I'd also extend that to, you know, construction, um, uh, you know, architecture stuff, um, uh, interior design. 
uh, even even like electrician. So any anything where you're outlining a service, um, I, I think product type companies, you know, proposals can also be a, really valuable. But a lot of that kind of is intuitive because products are by nature you, you need to define their features. I think it's interesting because as you say these, I think about a lot of things. Like for example, I think about a lawn care business at my house. I've never got a a written proposal from them before, right? They come, they look at the house, they say it's this much money to cut your lawn, this much money to be able to do the shrubs. But I've never actually seen something that's really a professional proposal type presentation from them. And it makes me think about how much more business I would probably do with that company if I had a choice between them and somebody else, if I had a proposal. The same thing as like, if I bring somebody in to fix my air conditioning, best case scenario, I get that handwritten thing about what they would do, right? Sometimes the handwriting is bad like mine. Sometimes it's not, but it's right. not professional. And then I've never had anybody print a proposal on demand and then be able to give it to me. And it makes me think about the professionalism and the perspective uh, would be completely different with somebody that did. Is that what you guys find? And, and I'm just throwing examples, but in an industry where somebody has a really well presented proposal do you have any kind of stats or ideas of how much more they close the sale against competitors that don't yeah well i think i think you bring up a really interesting point ty when when you're in an industry that doesn't do any kind of proposal even simple proposals they don't need they don't need to be crazy but a simple proposal can really distinguish you from your competitors um one of the things that i love putting uh, in proposals and a lot of my customers do are, 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 you know, different upsell opportunities. So thinking about this lawn mowing s- service, right? Um, imagine a, a line item that says lawn mowing service, and you clarify this, it's this many times per month, this interval, this frequency, here's the price. Um, but then also they can trim your shrubs. Um, maybe there's some one-time landscaping stuff that, that you could pitch to this prospect. We'll put that in the proposal. You know, what are some other things, some other simple line extension offerings that you could have? Um, uh, weed whacking, right? That could you could include in a proposal to allow for more upsells and clarity to your prospect. But back to your original point, I think there there are so many industries where if you just had a nice cover letter, a simple scope of work of what you could do and some additional upsells, huge distinguishment in a lot of markets. And that's exactly what I'm thinking too, is that like, this is so rarely done and it's such an easy thing to create massive dis- differentiation between you and anybody else that comes in, right? I can't think about too many industries that that do this besides bigger ones that are selling very expensive stuff. And the ones that are, are the everybody else, this is, this seems like your software simplifies this where almost anybody business can adopt it. And then it's like a huge clear advantage over your competition because you're coming in with a nice, well-written, printed proposal. And what's interesting is not just even selling that client, it's upselling the client. As you just said, if you're coming in and talking about shrubs and upsells, then I would think you're more inclined to make those upsells that way. And you don't have to worry much about your sales agents doing it, right? So if you right. send, you know, you're not the owner of the lawn care business and you send, you know, whoever in to do it then you don't even know if they're upselling shrub shrub services, right? But if they have a proposal and a system and a format they can follow, then they're always getting a professional presentation and they're always getting all the upsells and things I, I would see. I, I think it could be groundbreaking to almost any industry in any company. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I do think, I think a lot of times proposals these days are interactive, they're online. Um, with our system at Smart Pricing Table, you, you can download a PDF. You could have a nice printed copy. But I think the power can come in when you send a digital version that has interactivity to it, right? So your your customer, your prospect can say, "Yeah, I'd actually like this the shrub trimming as well. I'd I'd like to have you. I'd like to opt in on this particular <laughs> thing that you pitched to me specifically." Um, that interactivity is really important. Um, whereas a, I think a PDF can kind of um, get lost easily, or it's just not interactive. Yeah. And what's nice about that is I'm 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 looking at that like on your website with the sample proposals. And it's really brilliant because like you're in marketing and there's you, you come from marketing. There's a million things you could sell in marketing, right? From right. funnel building to content production to SEO. But I like the way that you have it done because they can see exactly all the services and how much it is. And they can even expand and then drill down just those services so they can actually see. It's really brilliant because 
it allows you a way of actually a really simple way of showing all the products and services that you have and then only ever clicking and opening the stuff that's really relevant that they even have an interest in. But stemming enough curiosity and the other stuff where they're like, oh, Twitter, I never even thought about doing that. You guys did Twitter and then opening up that as well. I mean, it just seems like a brilliant way to sell the primary product as well as do a lot more upsells as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a, a good proposal should also, if it's in the right format, can double as a brochure. The reality is Ty, on when you're on a sales discovery call with someone or you're at their house selling services, you only have a certain amount of time. And if you say too much, your prospect hears nothing, right? right? They're just overwhelmed. But if you can send a proposal that has is digestible, but has additional items that they can review in like a brochure like manner, I think that's where things can, people can really start turning things on. At, at my uh, former agency, we always had a section on all of our proposals. It would say additional items for consideration. I put three or four optional items on there based on the sales conversation, based on my intuition. And it's just crazy how often people will pay you for stuff um, because you simply offered it. They didn't even know you provided it, but they'd love to, right? Um, so make it make it easy, cater to your customer, give them options. I, I think it's just really powerful. Yeah, it, it's very powerful. And like, uh, I mean, honestly, it's it's perplexing to me because there's it's so interesting to me because we, I've never even thought about this before. And I legit, it's hard to even finish the interview because... <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I can't have to say it. Like my head is spinning right now. Like, oh my gosh, why have we never even thought of this before? It's such a ridiculous thing because we sell expensive software. So the the, the statistics to support what you say is that only 5% of the facts in one of these discussions is ever retained. So this is why people get off these calls and they say, you know, they all say, please send me more information, right? It's always the same thing. And then it's hard to know what to send them because they can't retain everything they're being told. But this gives you a way of basically getting the best stuff to them. They're like, okay, I'll send you a proposal. And then the proposal says, okay, this is what we propose. Here's the package. Here's everything you get with it. And then here's the even the upsells. And I would see that that would be significantly more effective because even though they only retain 5% of the facts of what that salesperson said, the reality is with the proposal, they get every feature, every benefit. They walk away with knowing exactly every aspect of what they get in the tech. It just seems like a really powerful way for anybody to sell anything, especially since most people in most industries don't even do anything like this. Yeah, well, Ty, you're getting at, you know, I, I love uh, origin stories on how things were created. I, I remember just sitting behind a document one day, and I, I'm a software guy, and uh, just the pain of writing a proposal was so hard. If we, if there's a spelling error, you've got to bring it up back open in Word, export it as a PDF, reattach it. There were so many challenges that we were having at my own agency, um, and I really wanted to create something that... I could build things efficiently, um, really quickly, right? I'm a sales guy. I've got stuff to do. I can't spend hours and hours each day creating proposals. Um, and I, I, I always, I tend to think systems, right? So one of the things that you'll see with at Smart Pricing Table is, you know, we've got templates. You've got, there's a line item catalog so that once you define a, a line item, you can save it to the library, use it over and over and over. And, you know, I think one of the most exciting things, uh, results of, of the software was, you know, we were able to create probably thirty to $60,000 complex website proposals in generally under 60 minutes. Um, it, it was wild. Um, and our close rate was fantastic because of the detail. So let's say, for example, that we have a program where we help people sell software, where it helps people build business credit, get financing. Sure. And what, 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 with that kind of proposal, it's, it, it's, so, you know, we have like say five products and each product is the same, right? So when we talk to somebody, they're usually fitting into one of those five products. So can the proposal template then be saved? So if I'm talking to Joe Smith and he's perfect for product one, I can then talk to Sally Sue and then Sally Sue just gets the same template as what I sent to Joe Smith. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so you you could create a a new proposal. It my in my system specifically, it'll ask you what template you want to base it on, and then it generates the proposal in under a second. And then you can customize it as much as you'd like. Maybe Sally Sue needs a, a, a special service that you don't normally offer. You can outline that really quick. 
And you're like, actually, you know what? We should offer this. <laughs> Save to library, right? Add it back to your template. Uh, really built for you know rapid proposal generation. I think our record was maybe five minutes. <laughs> Yo, I can <laughs> and, imagine. And we, and I we can won. absolutely that imagine. One. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're doing very similar stuff and, and just adding a thing here or there, this thing could be rapid fire. And like I said. Uh, I'm going to get off and dive deeper into your stuff when we're done. And I, I think I'm going to send it to my sales team and just say, guys, I got this. This is brilliant. I think this could work effectively because I think it's just a brilliant idea of off every sales call they get into to send it. And you know, the great thing for me as the owner is I get to make sure the person sees the stuff that I want them to see every time, even if the sales rep doesn't do it, which happens all the time, right? Your sales right. reps only say a fraction of what you'd like them to say. And you listen to the call and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe they didn't say A, B, C, D, E. It's a way of getting every message that you want to make sure you get to a prospect to every prospect so from a salesperson even owner's perspective it's huge hugely powerful yeah i didn't i didn't do sales for the last four years while i owned my agency and before this i never could have dreamed of that because our product was so technical and I, I think that's a that's a really that's a core value that it brings to the table is build your templates build your line items make them really clear and then you can have salespeople create proposals based on the templates. Yeah. Well, what about, what's in a good one? Uh, what's in a good business proposal? Yeah. I'd say at minimum, uh, at minimum I, I'd include these kind of things. So first off, have a nice cover page with some good branding, your logo, possibly theirs, um, who, what the project is, uh, name, uh, you know, who re requested it, those kind of things. So simple cover page. Um, I, I then always have a little bit of biographical information. Uh, I think if you, if you're in a service type business and you can show your team that makes it feel like it's not anonymous, um, I, those are people that work for someone. So there's some trust there. You know, you, this is a real business. Um, biographical information is really helpful. Don't get too wordy. Um, uh, don't people care mostly about how your product or service intersects with their problem. They don't care about you terribly much. Um, but but some basic information. Um, I'd also say social proof, um, testimonials. Uh, you know what are some what are some testimonials that a, a prospect could connect with based on their industry. Um, I, obviously, terms. Um, I think it's really important to include terms in a proposal so they don't show up later, and it's a bunch of now you've got to slow down the process or there's some surprises. Um, and then I'd also say scope of work. So scope of work is. That's my world. <laughs> it's where I live and breathe, uh, making that really clear. But I'd say those components, cover letter, some biographical information, and preferably some social proof uh, terms, and then a scope of work. Here's who we are, and here's what we offer, and here are the prices. Don't overcomplicate it, right? Um, but th th those are kind of the, the uh, bare bones that I would always put. Now, with your tech, what if I have, <clears throat> like, our clients have the ability to pay one pay or pay monthly? We can right. even go through a finance source and get them financing. So right. there's, let's say, three different ways they could potentially pay. Is there a way that I could use this to be able to, can I go and use Smart Pricing Table to be able to then show multiple different ways they could pay? Yeah, yeah. you can, um, uh, with our service, you can have one-time line items, but you can also have recurring. Um, and you can have upsells for, for either of those, um, which you'll, you'll see if, if, if all of this, you're really curious, you know, we're on a podcast and you can't maybe visualize this, go to smart pricing table. And there's some, uh, there's some sample proposals on there that will show you exactly what Ty and, Ty and I are talking about, but yeah, definitely, uh, in, in marketing, you have a lot of recurring services. You have a lot of one time and you've got to kind of bring those together. Um, and, and our software, we also show totals for each. So here's your total you know, that, you know, as they're, as they're checking boxes, they can see the total and, uh, and then there's a one-time total and then a recurring total as well. So they've got a running, you know, here's the initial fee, here's the ongoing cost. Yeah. And by the way, I, if you're watching this, I, re I recommend that you do this, that go to smartpricingtable.com. And then when I got here, I just clicked on the three line bar at the top, right. And then you click on sample proposals. What I'm looking at right now is Rogers landscaping and it's phenomenal because it just, it's right at the beginning at, at top, it tells you how much it is, tells you the recurring, tells you the discount. And then it has all these products listed very simply in a way where you can click to expand to know what you want. Then the person can actually come in here and can even sign, like they can do an e-sig right on the actual thing. I've never seen anything like this before. I really recommend you go check it out because if you're like me, this is just a simple way to sell a lot more of what you should be selling or a lot more of what you're selling. 
what, what shouldn't be in here? What do you see people try to stuff into proposals that you're like, what is wrong with you? Why would you put that in a proposal? Yeah, well, uh, here's a here's a quick one. Don't ever put a reference of someone who wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember I was doing some citing once and I called uh, references and and the guy said I'd never hire him again. <laughs> well, that, that's a that's an easy <laughs> win. Um, if that wasn't in, intuition already, um, I'd say uh, uh, the biggest thing is just people tend to talk too much. You too much content, too much. You know, there's a saying in the design world that if everything is bold, then nothing is bold, right? We tend to overcomplicate things. Um, where we're just going into so much detail. And the reality is that people just don't read. Um, and so I would not, I wouldn't, you know, that's that happy medium where you're given enough information so they can understand, um, and but not so much that they're getting overwhelmed. Um, specific, other specific things. That's a great question. Um, let, let me let me chew on that. If I, I'll interrupt you if I can think of some really bad ideas. <laughs> they do just just, just spurt out. Say, die, die, die. God, this yeah. is it. Yeah. But along that same line, I mean, what are the challenges people face? Like, if people come in and they're actually a, they they come in, they look at it, they're like, I'm getting smart pricing table, and they get it. What is your team found to be the challenges, the roadblocks people have to then actually figuring out what they need to do to be able to write the proposal? Yeah, well, first thing I'll say um, uh, to your audience, um, I actually do a little bit of ad hoc consulting when I do demos and kickoff calls if, if uh, for free trials. Um, so I, I love getting into this. If you want to just see like how how can my um, services fit in this format, I'd love to chat chat with you about it. Um, some of the I actually have. Let me grab a document. I have some kind of some big big challenges. Um, one of the biggest ones I'd say, uh, Ty, there's a saying that goes, if there's a mist in the pulpit, there's a fog in the congregation. And the big idea is, look, if you don't know what you're selling, your prospect has no freaking clue, <laughs> right? Um, if, if, if you don't know what you mean when you say, um, I'm going to do some landscaping services or some social media management services, I promise you they have even less in, in, you know, understanding of what you're actually going to sell. So um, I would say that's a big one. I also call that kind of the vague vortex. When you're vague, it creates all sorts of problems, client misunderstandings, frustrations. Um, you're, you're not charging enough um, because you were vague in the first place. Um, and a couple of uh, just pain points with proposal writing, uh, they, they take too much time. Um, a lot, and, and that's because you're not, you know, generally that's because you're not building a system. I, I think proposals are like any other part of business. They need attention. They need a system. And if you build a system, the system will pay dividends. Um, they oftentimes take too long because we're reinventing the wheel or we're starting from scratch each time. Um, I'd also say back and forth is really painful. Uh, you know, imagine, Ty, you're getting X service. You know, you might reach out to five or six different companies and um, you're going to get five or six different proposals on, on the vendor side. You know, they're feeling the pain of, you know, often people times uh, people want apples to apple comparisons. And so you're going back and forth constantly. Well, if your proposal is interactive, if you can give different options, uh, not only will you do less uh, back and forth, but they can actually just make their selections and close the deal. Right. Um, so those are some of the common um, some of the big ones as far as actually getting a proposal written, you know, being clear, being detailed, um, and, uh, and other pitfalls related to that. Joe, what are things people should have ready before writing a proposal? Like in my head, I'm thinking our features and our benefits, right? The product mm -hmm. pricing. I mean, well, what things do you think help when I sit down and actually sit down to be able to write the proposal? Like what does it help when I sit down with smart pricing table to write this thing and to be able to set it up? What helps me to, to, to be prepared to do so? Yeah. Well, let, let's let's talk about let's talk about line items specifically or, or your scope of work, and we can talk about we can talk about other things. But let's just say let's just say it's a fog to you, and you're not sure where to begin. Well, what I want what people can do is sit down and write down these are the five, ten different things that I offer. These are the titles. Okay, I offer this service or this product. Then take each line item and follow this format. Start with a summary sentence. 
just short and sweet. What is this? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to use, for example, social media marketing. Okay. So let's say I'm going to manage Credit Suites, uh, your, your, your uh, social media page, Ty. Um, social media management. Okay. The first thing you're going to see in that line item is I'm going to, I'm going to give you a summary. Okay. So I'm going to manage your social media profiles, which includes posting and engaging with your followers. Simple sentence. Mm -hmm. Then um, I like this format. Um, features or work included, followed by a bulleted list. This is really helpful for your customer because they can scan, but it's helpful for you also because you can really think through what are the actual components, okay? Then I would have a, an additional section right underneath that bulleted list of any restrictions, if there are any that you want to spell out. Restrictions have saved my tail so many times. <laughs> um, and, then, um, and then I'd say upsells. Um, so, for, for instance, um, Ty, what if I, uh, what uh, from from uh, kind of the standard offering, maybe I don't I don't allow I don't um, won't, won't interact with your um, post comments, okay? Um, but if you pay me an extra two fifty a month, I'll interact with up to fifty um, post comments on your social media profile. That could be an upsell to my social media management. Um, uh, line item. So, so again, summary sentence, features included or work included in a bulleted list, uh, limitations, and then upsells. I think, look, if you check out Smart Pricing Table or not, just go through that that process for all of your offerings, your service lines. It'll make a huge difference. And last thing on this, when you've outlined things like that, Ty, when I've spelled out my social media marketing uh, line item, it's really easy to price because I can actually ask questions like, what does it take for each of these parts? And I can price it really well. When you price it well, business is fun. And I think that's a highly effective way to be able to break it down. And I like the bulleted lists too, because I'm looking at these sample proposals. That's exactly, and I'm trying to build this thing in my head while I'm interviewing you, which is why like you, ADD people should not be podcast hosts apparently, <laughs> especially when they have really good guests that have really good products on because it's a complete distraction. So now what I'm trying to figure out is, um, well, well, let me ask you this. I send the proposal out. How do I maximize engagement? How, how do I know they're going to open the proposal or the things that you're doing or the things I should be doing? To get the thing actually even open, because as a marketer, we're marketers, you and I. Yeah. So we we get it, right? Like getting that thing open is the number one priority, whether it's an email, a direct mail piece, the proposal, whatever it is. So what do we do to maximize engagement to get them to actually take a look at this proposal? Ty, I'm so glad you asked that question. It's one of my favorite um, things to work through. Um, so how how I've always done it historically, um, and I think you know if, if you're listening. Write this down. Um, there's uh, there's some real gold here, be, and it, this helped me personally with my close rates. So let's say, Ty, that uh, st sticking with the social media management thing, um, uh, you're interested in my services. Um, I would then meet with you for 30 minutes and have a sales discovery call. This is really important. You need to have an accurate proposal or you're just noise. So 30 minutes, focus, download of what Ty needs. Then what I would do at the end of that meeting, Ty, is I would say, well, the next step, Ty, in our process is to do a proposal review meeting, okay? Note how I said the next step. I didn't say, would you like to? Would you have time? It's just the next step in our process. And what I would do, generally, I'd be on Zoom. I'd open up my Calendly. I'd ask Ty for his time zone, and I'd say, hey, here's all the days I have open. You let me know a day that works well, and I'll show you the time slots in your time zone. This is really, really important because I don't want to just create a proposal for you, Ty. I want to actually sell my proposal to you, um, sell you the feature. So, Ty, here's why I set this up. Here's the overall structure. Here's some additional things I thought you might want to consider. Do any of these look interesting to you? And in that proposal review meeting, so the second meeting after the discovery call, I, I can surface objections. Ty, maybe you have, maybe you think it's a little bit too high and turns out I can get the price down by two grand in a couple of seconds and we're good. If you're just chucking a proposal over the fence and hoping for the best, it's so hard. You will never get the kind of engagement with your prospect when you are walking through the proposal together. And so I, I highly re recommend the um, proposal review meeting. I love it. I mean, Joe, this has been so powerful. 
um, today and, and legit, like I am building this whole thing out in my head and I'm just astonished that people don't do this. Like, it's just mind blowing to me because it's so perfect. So many people, especially if you're selling high ticket, they get off the phone and say, let not even let me think about it. Usually it's like, okay, can you send me more information? I mean, that's what they're always saying, right? Cause they right. know they only retained a fraction of it or even worse. You don't even have the decision maker on the phone. How many times does that happen? Right. I got to go talk to my wife. I got to go talk to my partner. And then, you know, they're doing a crappy job of trying to explain it to whoever they're explaining it to, but this is just brilliant. Because even if they retain none of what you said, you're able to send them a proposal with all of your features and your benefits and all of your, your actual social proof and your testimonials and case studies on there and a summary of exactly what you do. So they walk away with all the info you want them to have. And then also on top of that, anybody they may present that to within their organization or other decision makers also see that same stuff you want them to see. And like I said, it's a checks and balance as well. Even if your salesperson sucks, you still make sure that everything you want conveyed to the customer is getting conveyed. Uh, right. I, I want to ask you uh, one thing as I wrap up. Can I see if somebody opens this thing? Like if I send somebody a proposal, is there a way that I can see if without if they didn't sign it, that they actually opened and looked at the proposal? Yeah, absolutely. Another favorite part of, uh, of our setup. So um, what what happens is if, if you send a proposal, it'll actually notify you that they opened it via email. Um, there's a lot of, there's different proposal software in the market, but because we focus on the pricing table, we have a nice little nugget here. So our system, um, when you get the notification that they've opened your proposal, it'll have a view analytics button. You can click on that and it'll give you a log of their interactions with your proposal. Not only will it show you what pages they clicked on, maybe your about us page or your terms or your scope of work, but in our system, it'll also tell you if they expanded a line item because our line items expand and collapse, whether they checked an upsell or they checked a box, whether they changed a quantity. And so you can get a lot of information as a salesperson on their level of engagement and it can make a huge difference. Um, imagine the difference between seeing all those interactions with the pricing table versus customer looked at pricing table, <laughs> right? Um, so our, our, our analytics system is awesome. And I think it can really give your give salespeople the cues. They need. Yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. As a, from a marketer standpoint, that's ridiculous. It's like you heat mapped, <laughs> you right. heat mapped the proposal. Yeah. You did, legit. Like now anything that anybody does within that thing, anybody can see. That's just, that's mind blowing. Where can everybody go that's listening and watching this to be able to do a deep dive, schedule a demo with you, see examples and just overall get more info? Yeah, yeah. You can find uh, find me at smartpricingtable.com. We have some sample proposals on there. Um, I also have a free guide. It's called the Profitable Proposal Blueprint. Um, feel free to download that, no cost. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I do demos all the time, uh, and um, I love personalizing the application in a demo. So if you if you think this might be interesting, just schedule a demo, and and uh, I'd love to kind of look at some of your offering, think about the line items, the potential upsells, and see if it could be a helpful fit. Um, I'm also big on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me. Uh, I probably have that in the show notes, Ty, but um, I love uh, love hanging out on LinkedIn, doing doing good posts on there as well. Awesome. Listen, Joe, thank you so much for coming on with us today. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Ty. I appreciate you having me. All right. So listen, if you're watching this, uh, this is honestly, it's interesting being a podcast host because legit, you go through maybe 100 people and then you get one that you're like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Like, why did I not know that? Like, this literally is one of those for me. It's just, it's mind blowing because the reality is people don't do this. They do a sales presentation, they walk away, and that customer only retains a fraction of it. I mean, you've probably done a sales presentation and come back days later, and the person doesn't even remember what was even discussed during the call. This is one of the most effective ways, if not one of the, the if not the most effective way I've ever seen of getting a really detailed synopsis of what you do, uh, social proof of exactly what it is you sell in your prospect's hands. 
And I legit am getting off this call and scheduling a demo uh, to learn more because my head is turning. I just think there's so much value. So here's what you should do. Go to smartpricingtable.com. If you go to smartpricingtable.com, there's a big green button. I'm colorblind. I think it's green. If it's not, don't hold it against me. It says schedule. Okay, Joe says thumbs up. So I need the lots of thumbs up to verify colors. So it's green and it says schedule demo and schedule a demo. You can schedule it right there. But what I like really about the site is you can go to sample proposals and sample propose you, proposal, proposal shows you a whole new perspective of presenting your offer to a prospect or client that I've never even thought of before. And I think when you see this, it'll be as eye-opening for you as me. Now, if you click on pricing, you're going to see it's too cheap. But don't tell Joe that because he might raise the price. That might happen. I'm going to tell him it's too cheap when we're off this call. But you'll see how ridiculously, insanely affordable this is. And if you just want more info on the value of proposals, you could just click on free guide right there on the three drop, three little bar drop down on the site as well. But it all starts at at smartpricingtable.com. Stay it out above your competition. Have a very effective way of selling your customer and upselling your customer. And you can get it all and see exactly how it works at smartpricingtable.com. That's smartpricingtable.com. But thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great day. Make sure you check out smart.